All right, today I am building this artist caddy for a fellow artist friend of mine, Mark Campbell. He has a great YouTube channel about being an artist and does some really awesome illustrations, so if you're into art, his channel is definitely worth checking out. He came up with this design that holds all his art supplies and keeps everything at his fingertips. Just one spin and it spins around to get to the next color. So once he was happy with his design, he passed it off to me and he gave me a fair amount of leeway on the type of materials to use, what type of what I wanted to use and what type of uh, patina I thought would look cool on the copper. And so between the two of us, I think we came up with a really cool piece. So uh, let's get into the build. All right, so to get started, I need to make these rings and I'm a little concerned with the number of holes that I'm going to drill into this that this is going to be super weak and break if I make it out of solid wood. So I'm going to make it out of plywood and uh, I'm going to take advantage of that plywood structure to create an accent. So I'm going to use this piece of paduk as my accent. So first step, we're going to mill this up and resaw it on the bandsaw. All right, while I was at it, I resawed the walnut top and bottom pieces for the plywood. All right, I have them all uh, milled and sanded, edge jointed. So it's time to do a little bit of assembly here. Use the veneer tape. All right, and then I've had this uh, really beautifully figured uh, piece of walnut that's been hanging around the shop. It's just been a little bit too small for any project I've done. So I think I'm gonna use it on this project. I think it'll be a, be a really nice piece. So this will be the top of the, uh, the artist caddy, the show face. All right, so I'm just doing one uh, sandwich at a time. After this one dries, I will put another sheet of walnut on top of here, but I want to do one at a time so that way I keep my seams taped nice and tight and don't have any uh, gaps in the finished product. Even though this is only going to be seen on the edge, I want to make sure the edge doesn't have any gaps in it. So the tape sanded it off this side. So now I'm gonna just glue this side, put it back in the vacuum clamp. All right, then I just repeated the process for the rest of the panels. All right, once I got all the panels glued up, the fastest way to remove the veneer tape was just to send them through the drum sander.
All right, I got the veneer tape cleaned off. So I'm gonna just basically square it up at the table saw. Uh, I got some excess hangout over here, so basically I'm gonna find the, the center and then square it up uh, so it fits nicely on the CNC. All right, to machine all these holes in the top for the paint brushes to drop through, I am working on putting them out on the CNC, but first I'm doing a test cut so I want to make sure the uh, copper tube fits nice and snug in there um, so, it, so it doesn't slide out really easy, but also I don't have to force it in there. So this is just about a thou too tight, so I'm going to do another test cut to see if I can get it a little bit tighter. And if you look in there, I have a little collar in here that I've machined. So when it's installed, that collar will hide the cut edge of the pipe. And uh, I'll round this over when I'm done so it's nice and decorative. But uh, so you got my little uh, piece of pipe. This is just a test piece. The piece will actually be a little bit longer. But that guy will slide into that collar and uh, be covered up. All right, I'm gonna double stick tape this piece down to this um, piece of melamine. So that way when I'm cutting out all those circles, if it starts to relieve uh, tension and the board starts to cup. Uh, if it's full double stick tape down, it will uh, give me one last stitch effort to try to save it before it cups up and gets ruined in the uh, the rest of the machining. So hopefully I'll have a chance to flatten it out if something bad happens, if it cups. I've reached the limitations of my CNC machine. It uh, was wide enough to cut out all these circles, but it doesn't have enough width to cut out the entire circle. So I used my router trammel and I cut the base out, marked with a uh, nail from the trammel. And so I had my CNC mark the center of all these guys. So now I can put this guy on top of here, line up the two holes, and just use a pattern bit to route out the rest of them. All right, so I ran into a little bit of a problem with this Lazy Susan. Uh, the original Lazy Susan that I purchased had a little flange on it, so it attached to the bottom plate and it would stay separate or stay stationary while the top section spun. So these two pieces would be, so these two pieces would be separate. But every time I wiggled that old Lazy Susan, it just sounded terrible. It was like shh, 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 shh. The bearings were really loose in it. So I found this guy, which is pretty much silent, and I think it'll be a much better user experience for my client. But it doesn't have that same attaching flange. So what I've come up with is I am going to use this Wingate. I've resawn it down to a, about an eighth inch thick or so. And um, that is going to get glued onto here, and then I'm gonna route it so it's gonna create a little bit of a shadow. So when I put the uh, other piece on top, the whole thing can spin, but it'll still look like it's two separate pieces. So it'll still look like the original design, but it'll all move at one, one piece. And this will also give me enough thickness because this one uh, mounts through the Lazy Susan, so it'll give me enough thickness to screw into. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, time to veneer this to this.
All right, so I cut out around the circle on the uh, bandsaw just to get it close. Not quite. I'm going to use the pattern bit to flush it up so I have a perfect fit. All right, so I'm prepping this so I can double stick tape it down together. I'm going to use this drill bit to drop through the hole to help line them all up and double stick, stick tape this circle that I cut out with the router bit trammel and then use my router bit again, flush cutting router bit to trim out around the edges. All right, now I'm going to cut this excess off at the bandsaw so the router bit doesn't have to work so hard. And then go back to the pattern bit and trim this guy out. Good. I think I'm going to do a little sanding to clean up all this fuzzy stuff and clean up the front a little bit. And then we'll reset this on the CNC using the center hole and uh, route out for the Lazy Susan. Alright, so I have an eighth inch round over bit in there, so I'm going to round over all the edges of uh, each of these pieces. And then when I get to this one where I've added this darker wind gate to, I'm going to round it over, then I'll raise the bit the thickness of the wood and do it again so that way this becomes a shadow line because it'll be cut back in there. Hopefully that'll make sense in a minute. All right, I'm going to use my veneer bag since this is such a wide surface to uh, put some pressure on this guy. I'm going to go fairly sparingly with the uh, glue because I don't want anything to squeeze out into this uh, recess I just created because that is going to be really difficult to clean up. So I'm just going to work a little bit onto this pretty thin layer. This thing is capable of putting just thousands of pounds of pressure down on this. And with that little gap reveal that I created, I don't want it to like put so much pressure that it crushes that edge. So I'm uh, running it a little bit less than what I normally do, but it should still be enough uh, pressure to, for that glue to set up here in about an hour. So I'm uh, just using this little toggle to adjust the pressure so I'm not at full strength because I just don't want to risk crushing that. So now I need to cut a dado out for this uh, Lazy Susan to go in. So I uh, have the bottom remounted back onto this plate using double stick tape. And I'm going to use the center 
of uh, my workpiece that I used to cut out the circle originally uh, to realign the CNC to set up where zero is at. Fits pretty good. For the copper tube to hold the paintbrushes and colored pencils and things, all the art supplies, I'm going to use this standard plumbing pipe. Uh, the copper pipe, it's an inch and a half diameter, and of course, it's got all the stamping from the factory, and I don't want that on there. We're going to decorate it up a little bit, so I'm going to start out with a wire brush just to clean all the uh, stuff off there, and then we'll patina it from that point. All right, I'm going to cut the copper at the table saw. Uh, you could use one of those uh, pipe cutters that spin around, but I don't want to make sure it doesn't slide, and I don't want to have to measure and mark each one because that's going to just add some accumulative air or a lot of opportunity for air. So I'm going to set up a stop here so that way it's guaranteed to be all the same length. And since this is copper, it's perfectly safe to machine woodworking tools. So I got my parts here. I'm gonna put some muriatic acid in here. I have some hydrogen peroxide. I'm gonna put in this spray bottle. Then some fire, and then a quenching bucket to quench it. And that's how I'm gonna patina these tubes. All right, since I'm wearing a respirator because of the muriatic acid fumes, uh, I'm just gonna jump in here with a little voiceover. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm etching the copper with the muriatic acid. And then I'm wiping off the majority of it, just leaving just a little bit of a residue. And then I'm spraying the copper with the hydrogen peroxide and just letting it sit for a little bit. And that reaction will slowly eat into the metal and tarnish it. And then to dry off the hydrogen peroxide and accentuate uh, the colors, I'm using the torch to heat it up a little bit. Once the color is getting to where I like it and what it looks good, then I just dunk it in the bucket to quench it and that kind of freezes in that color. All right, and that first process was the base coat. That gave it kind of just an overall patina color. And then I'm coming back with uh, some erratic acid on the rag and the texture of the rag, I'm using it to stipple into uh, the pipe. So as I dab it around and then respray it with hydrogen peroxide, it creates a texture on the pipe. And then I'll just rinse it all off with water. And then once it all dries, I'll seal it up with some conversion varnish and just spray it on with my spray gun. All right, next we need to manufacture this D-ring and these little decorative clips to hold the D-ring to the top of the caddy. So I'm just gonna use my baby CNC to machine some slots in this piece to uh, hold this uh, D-ring in place. All right, I sort of have my little bender set up here. It's kind of overkill for this project because I'm only going to bend this one little thing. And it works a lot better if you bolt it down, but since it's just this one little thin thing, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a go here. All right, just a little past halfway for the D-ring. Would have went way smoother if it was bolted down. But there we go, there is our D-ring. All right, so I'm gonna test fit it in my little uh, holder here. All right, once I'm happy with the fit, I'm gonna just mark it with a Sharpie. And this is where it needs to be bent. All right, so I'm just gonna put this guy in here, line it up with my mark. All 
All right, being a more of a woodworker than a metal worker, that was a little bit challenging, but I think it turned out pretty nice. It's got a nice shaped D-ring there. It's got little slots, little tabs to fit in my little slots there. So yeah. All right, I'm gonna use this same or very similar technique to add a patina to this copper so it matches the other. All right, I turned this piece on the lathe. It's just a little mildly decorative post. It's not really going to seem because it's being the center behind all of these tubes. And uh, just cut it to fit in there. So this is what's going to help attach the top and the bottom together. So now we just got some, uh, I'm going to put some finish on this and then we got some assembly to do. All right, I got myself into a little bit of a challenge here. I have 30 of these tubes that need to seat into 30 of these slots. And then on the back, or on the top, these guys right here are all dadoed, so the tubes need to fit in these guys as well. And to get all 30 holes in the bottom, lined up with 30 holes of these guys, to line up with 30 holes of these guys, when I put the top on, I can't really reach in to get the center, because they all need to go on at the same, same time. So it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. So to help me out, I'm going to make a base to go underneath here to hold this up high enough so I can slide some clamps underneath there to help give me a helping hand to hold things in place while I wiggle all of these little tubes into place. gonna work. I need to glue this down. I was gonna put a piece of tape there before I finished it but I forgot so I'm just gonna sand back down to bare wood to make sure I get glue, good glue contact there. Between the screw and the glue, that should never come apart. All right, so I have yet to get this to go together in any test dry fit, but once I get it together, I'm not gonna take it apart. So I'm gonna take a risk here and use some slow set epoxy and fill in or put a little dab in each one of these to help lock these guys in. So once I do get it together, uh, they won't fall out.
All right, it's going good, but we need some persuasion to just get some extra taps into the center. All right, they're all down. Yes, success. All right, we need to screw this guy down now. All right, so our little uh, CNC clip, I need to cut those tabs off. And then we'll just sand that off. All right, I got my CNC little uh, mount here. I had the CNC machine poke a hole in there so I could line it up. Make sure I'm perfectly centered. All right, so now I need to flush trim this edge with the inside of the pipe and then also round it over. So I have a round over bit with a flush trim bearing on it. And I've come this far, so if I screw it up, it's gonna be a disaster. So I am going to take small, shallow passes. So I'm gonna probably go around this thing a couple of times, uh, each time lowering the bit until I get down to where I'm happy with it. I don't have a clamp that's long enough to get to that, so I'm going to use this stick. Yeah, that should get some good pressure down on that. So I got this set up to uh, uh, support that, or so I don't hit that. All right, I took it back into the finishing room, sprayed it with a little varnish, and here's our finished piece.